so hello everyone so i am going to uh, solve question number 6.12 of the rotational motion so a child is a question says that a child stand at the center of the turn table with his two arms out stretched so this is your condition and the turn table is set to be rotating with an angular speed of 40 revolution per minute how much is the angular speed of the child if he folds his hand back and thereby reduces the moment of inertia by 2 by 5 times the initial values assume that the turntable rotates without the friction so let us consider here let us consider here as we know that the angular momentum angular momentum will remain conserved will remain conserved why because there is no external force acting on this whole system no external person is pushing or pulling the object or uh, table anything so no external impact is done so angular momentum will remain constant so l is equal to i omega will remain constant no matter if he changes the position of the uh, position of his hand okay so we, can we tell that uh, i1 omega 1 will be equal to i2 into omega 2 because i omega is constant now let us consider initially i1 is uh, i1 is uh, your uh, inertia initial inertia is i so the final inertia will be how much so as per the question they are telling that when he folds his hand hand thereby reduces his moment of inertia by 2 by 5 times so it means that the final i2 will be equal to 2 by 5 2 by 5 of uh, 2 by 5 of its initial inertia okay so this is 2 by 5 of inertial inertia now the omega 1 they have given as a omega 1 they have given as 40 revolution per minute so if we put the value i1 is equal to i into omega 1 is equal to 40 40 revolution per minute and i2 is equal to 2 by 5 into i into omega 2 so from here we can got the omega 2 omega 2 is equal to 40 into 5 divided by 2 so this is equal to 100 100 revolution per minute so in this way the angular speed will increase to the 100 revolution per minute from 40 revolution per minute so this is the question part a solution okay now i want to solve the question number question part that is b part so b part it is saying that so that the child's new kinetic energy of the rotation is more than that of the initial kinetic energy so let us consider what is the formula for the kinetic energy so the in uh, rotational motion the kinetic energy ke is equal to half i into omega square okay can we write like this half into i into omega into omega now let us consider <coughs> when we see here that i omega will remain constant it means that omega is remaining constant it means that the kinetic energy at initial state kinetic energy at initial state or initially k i1 is equal to half into i into omega into omega 1 okay since i i1 and omega 1 is uh, re, uh, remain constant but this won't be remain constant so what will happen if i will talk about the kinetic energy at a part 2 or a final states so it will be 1 by 2 into i into omega so this will be i2 into omega 2 so which will remain constant so i1 omega 1 is equal to i2 omega 2 but what will happen in place of omega 1 I have to put here omega 2 so if I will put here omega 2 so omega 2 initially the value of omega 1 was 40 so this is your 40 into half 
n2 i into omega we can write i1 omega 1 as i omega only and kinetic energy for um, kinetic energy is equal to omega 2 that is equal to 100 into half into i into omega because i2 omega 2 is equal to i1 omega 1 so that's why i have put here i omega only so this part will remain constant but uh, what about this part so this part from here we can see that the kinetic energy is ke is more kinetic energy that is second kinetic energy is more than kinetic energy one so i hope you have understood this so we have shown that the kinetic energy final kinetic energy will increase by 100 times but initially uh, not 100 times initially kinetic energy was 40 into i2 into omega and finally we have got 100 into half into i2 into i into omega okay now there is a question uh, that uh, there is a question that a rope of a negligible mass is worn around the hollow cylinder okay so let us consider there is a hollow cylinder there is a hollow cylinder right like this and there is a rope which is worn around this right so there is a wound which will make a wound like this okay like this and this is a central axis this is a central axis right and they have given that the mass mass of the mass of the cylinder mass of the cylinder is 3 kg and the radius is radius of the cylinder that is distance from the central axis is how much the radius is 0 0.4 meter they have given 40 centimeter so we can convert it into si unit what is the angular acceleration of the cylinder if the rope is pulled with the force of 30 newton so their pulling force pulling force that is force is equal to 30 newton right so if they are pulling it with the uh, 30 newton so what is the linear acceleration of the rope so we need to find angular acceleration that is alpha is equal to what and linear acceleration that is a is equal to what now as we know that it is no slip condition because uh, uh, assuming that there is no slip so if there is no slip condition so what will happen for no slip condition for no slip condition condition r into alpha is equal to linear acceleration okay so we need to for uh, finding our acceleration we need to find alpha that is angular acceleration so before that we know that uh, i so for i i for the cylinder that is i for the cylinder that is moment of inertia for the cylinder is equal to half not half it is m r square so mass is 3 kg into r square means 0 0.4 whole square so while we will calculate this so we will get 0 0.4 Four eight kg meter square right now we know that the torque tau is equal to r cross f or we can also write that force into perpendicular r perpendicular so can we find that what is the force so force is 30 newton but what about the r perpendicular so the r perpendicular is this where the force is acting and this is the perpendicular this distance is the perpendicular one and this is the central axis about which this cylinder is being rotated so force is 30 newton r perpendicular is 0 0.4 only so we can multiply it by 0 0.4 so what we will get if uh, if we will multiply it so finally we will get uh, 12 newton meter right it is 12 newton meter so we have got torque okay now one more thing is that torque is equal to torque is equal to torque is equal to i into alpha so we have got already torque is equal to 12 newton per meter what is in inertia of this body so inertia of this body is 0 0.48 what is the value of alpha so from here alpha is equal to 12 divided by 0 0.48 so finally we will get 25 
रेडियन पर सेकेंड स्क्वायर सो वी हैव गॉट अल्फा वैल्यू ऑफ अल्फा इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी फाइव दैट इज एंगुलर एक्सेलरेशन सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट वैल्यू वॉट वी वी नीड टू फाइंड सो दिस इज द एंसर वन ओके now we need to find the linear acceleration as well so if you want to find a linear acceleration so what we will do so linear acceleration a is equal to r into alpha so r is 0.4 into alpha is 25 so by multiplying it so we will get 10 25 4 100 so that is after point so we can write like this 10 meter per second square so finally we have got uh, the value of linear acceleration so i hope this is the easiest question ever you have found now let us solve this question 6.4 of uh, in 6.4 they are asking a rotor a rotor at a uniform angular speed 200 radian per second and engine needs to transmit a torque of 19 180 newtons so let us consider this is the rotor in a there is a rotor right and uh, it requires um, it requires uh, it transmits how much torque so torque they are transmitting is 180 newton and the speed that is omega is 200 radian per second okay what is the power required by the engine and one thing they have also given that the uniform angular velocity is the, uh, and there is no friction and the efficient assume that engine is 100% efficient so this is very easy question uh, so directly you can find power power in terms of linear we have generally used force into velocity but here it is an angular motion so power can be written as torque into omega so here torque is how much torque is 180 into omega is 200 so 18 to the 36 triple zero okay so this will be uh, what or this will be 3 36 kilowatt is the power so finally you have got the answer okay now this is a question uh, 6.15 it is given that from a uniform disc of a radius r a circular hole of a radius r by 2 is cut out so let us make a disc of a radius r so let us consider this is a disc okay this is a disc and it has having a r radius and a circular hole of r by 2 is cut out the center of gravity of the hole, hole is at r by 2 from the center of the original disc so let us consider this is the part where where the center of gravity of the small disc is lie and it has also radius of r by 2 so it means that it means that there is a disc which has been cut like this which has been cut like this okay which has been cut like this we need to find the center of gravity so as we know that this is x axis and this is y axis and uh, we need to find the uh, center of gravity so center of gravity will be x center uh, center of mass or center cg x cg and y cg since uh, since it is symmetrical it is symmetrical it is symmetrical so y value of y won't be changed so value of y will remain constant so we need to find the x centimeter x cg so x center of gravity will be equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 x2 divided by m1 plus m2 but the thing is that here we have cut out we have not added so we have to put here minus symbol we have to put here minus symbol because we have cut out this we have cut out this this disk so this will be m1 x1 minus m2 into x2 divided by m1 minus m2 
now let us find what is the mass m1 and m2 so let us consider let us consider mass of whole disk as m1 m1 is a mass so what will be the mass of the m2 so we don't know so as we we can consider that uh, the body is uniform so if body is uniform so the if density is sigma density of the plate is sigma so sigma is equal to mass per unit area so m1 by a1 so m1 by a1 is equal to sigma okay now what will be the m2 so m2 m2 can be written as m2 is equal to sigma into a2 area 2 now as we know that the relation area a1 is equal to is equal to pi by m pi r square and a2 is equal to pi into r by 2 whole square that is equal to pi r square by 4 so it be, it means that the area a2 a2 is equal to a1 by 4 so this is smaller area is a1 by 4 so in case of a, a, a2 a2 we can put here a1 by 4 so sigma into sigma into it is your a2 is equal to a1 by 4 so a1 in place of a1 we can put here in place of a1 we can put here m1 by sigma so sigma into m1 by sigma into 4 so finally a sigma sigma got cancelled so mass m2 will be become m1 by 4 so this is what we have got m2 right now x1 so x1 is this one this is x1 so x1 will be equal to 0 and x2 this is the point x2 x2 is equal to r by 2 so we have got x1 and x2 so we can put now values so if we put the values so what we will get so we are now going to get here uh, x1 is equal to x1 is equal to 0 x2 is equal to r by 2 mass is m1 and m2 is equal to m1 by 4 okay so we need to pull, put here the value every value so x center of gravity is equal to m1 m1 is equal to m1 into 0 minus m2 m2 is your m1 by 4 into x2 x2 is equal to r by 2 divided by divided by m1 minus m1 by 4 so finally we will get up minus m1 by 4 into r by 2 divided by Three four m one minus m one so three m one by four so four four got cancelled m one m one got cancelled so we will get r by six so it is minus r by six so center of gravity will be at a r by 6 position so x the final answer x center of gravity is equal to minus r by 6 minus r by 6 means it will lie a bit in this uh, from this zero distance to uh, r by 6 okay so i hope you have understood 6.15